Hello darlings and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, welcome. I'm just trying to put on my earrings and look a little bit more presentable for you. Today's video is a little bit different um, from a lot of the other videos I'm doing, not in the sense of filming, but just in the sense of the context that will be in this video. I will be talking about mental health and my journey with it and um, everything that I am currently feeling up until right now, just to give you guys a little bit of insight as to the person that I am and just a little bit of honesty I think like I think some of my videos sometimes lack a bit of honesty in the terms of how I'm really feeling a lot of videos and ever since I started recording for YouTube I feel like YouTube is a safe place to just you know um, talk about anything literally so I wanted to do a bit of an honest video for you today yeah, I'm gonna bring out my phone because I have my notes open and and I don't want to end up like blabbing on for too long. So yeah, if any of the context in this video triggers you or makes you feel some type of way or if you've got any further questions, kindly do reach out to the number at the top of the screen. I'll either pop it here or here and um, call them, ask them ask them the questions that you need to ask or reach out if you're feeling triggered in any way and yeah let's get into this so this is a hard one so i'm gonna yeah try and be as open as i can be at an early stage of my life i struggled with my mild schizophrenia and depression when i lived in the uk and that um was a big part of my life you know I did see a psychiatrist for it and a therapist. I was under medication for I think about five months. Um, and these meds really did affect my body. They helped me, but they really did affect my body. I put on a lot of weight. I think I was around like 16 or 17 when I went through this. So yeah, early stage of my, I don't know, young adult life. Um, and that's when my struggle with like mental health started. And yeah, I managed to overcome it, you know, through medication, through talking with a therapist. My therapy lessons didn't last long. I eventually had to like go back to England and go back to school. I didn't want to stop going to school because of this. So what schizophrenia is, if you don't know what it is, it's a disorder that affects a person's ability to think, feel, and behave clearly. The exact cause of schizophrenia isn't known, but a combination of genetics, environment, and altered brain chemistry and structure may play a role. Um, treatment can help, but this condition can't be fully cured. So within schizophrenia, you can then manifest depression or um, anxiety. My schizophrenia episodes and stuff like that had decreased with medication, but um, I did, I still struggled with like um, some depression and anxiety in my life. This is the first time I'm fully like accepting it, not only to myself, but to you know an online platform yeah so i still struggle with depression and anxiety and you know my anxiety had moments of highs and low periods i don't really know the medical term for it but there were times when like i really felt anxious and there are times when like it wasn't too bad like it was still manageable so it is a disease that you live with as a person but um um there are things that can trigger it and stuff like that currently experiencing high functioning social anxiety i haven't spoken to a professional about it yet about this current stage of my life and how i'm feeling this is the first time i'm fully accepting that i am experiencing this so i've yet to speak to someone about it but um the definition of it is, I'm just reading out my phone, is um, people with high functioning anxiety are often able to accomplish tasks and appear to function when in social situations, but internally they're feeling all the same symptoms of anxiety disorder. I didn't realize it. I mean, I did realize that I was experiencing anxiety, but I didn't realize to what extent until as of recently, I fully started to accept it um, to the point where you know, I 
opened up to my friends and my family and just was like, this is what I'm going through. I go through moments where I can't even be in society for a period of time. Like, I feel like my energy to pretend like I'm okay within society when I'm outside or when I'm, you know, socializing and try to pretend like I'm okay, sometimes that pretend is a little bit draining. So I go through moments where like, as of last weekend, I literally spent the entire weekend at home by myself. A big reason as to why I wanted to come out and speak about this is one, I'm currently like really going through it right now. I even had to come off social media. Um, I have moments where like, even walking in a supermarket, like I have to, rethink like how I'm gonna walk in the supermarket like me walking down the aisle like I'll play out how, what I'm gonna say or if someone I meet if I meet somebody like what is it am I gonna say um sometimes I even have a hard time putting together a sentence or putting together like words and stuff like that so as of recently, I've just been trying to stay away from social settings and stuff, but it's kind of hard, you know, because my job requires me to be social and it requires me to speak to everybody and just be this person that is happy and social and confident in speaking. But in reality, a lot of people that are required to be that way struggle with that a lot and I am one of those people I'm not the only person who has been struggling with this uh, in in Tanzania in the social media society or like in Dar es Salaam even in my peers I recently had coffee with my friend like two days ago and sat down with her and I was expressing to her that like this is what I'm going through and I had never really spoken to my friends about it and her response was like the most amazing and heartfelt response and she was very surprised and didn't know that I was going through this and she had opened up that sometimes she has periods of um, she also goes through anxiety it's so crazy because we're really good friends and I can speak to her about anything but I have never once sat down and opened up and said this is how I'm feeling you know mentally and I am struggling with this mental illness. And I think that's really unhealthy in any friendship or relationship. In our culture as Tanzanians, we're not known to open up about the things that we go through or whatever illnesses we're going through or however we're feeling. And I just wanna say, even though it's not our thing to be like that, I really do urge you to speak to the people around you and. I know that it can be hard to admit or open up, you know, because you don't know what response you're gonna get. Actually, one of the symptoms of anxiety, uh, social anxiety is the fear of being rejected or getting the wrong response. I'm going back to the story. I had coffee with this one good friend. Literally right after that, I went to go pick up something from another friend and she had asked me to go somewhere with her and I was like, no, I can't. I'm, I'm really going through it right now. Um, I'm having a hard time being in social settings and she was just like that is such a mzungu thing like to go through you know which is a bit negative you know if so I just urge you if either you're at the receiving end and your friend is trying to open up to you or you're at the giving end and you're trying to open up to somebody just please leave the lines of communication very unjudged because you don't know what this individual is going to say or you don't know what it takes to get to the point where you can open up the, in that way. So yeah, I just wanted to come on here and discuss with you guys like about mental health and it's a real thing and we all go through it and just because you're black or because you come from a black community or because you're Tanzanian doesn't mean that you then are not worthy of going or can't go through a mental illness can happen to anybody it can happen to anyone at whatever age at whatever mindset at whatever position at, it doesn't matter but it can happen to anyone and yeah i just wanted to come on here and open up about that so i've given you the definition of high functioning um 
anxiety disorder but um, some of the physical symptoms and I'm giving definition and symptoms and my personal symptoms just so if you're watching and any of these are something that you're going through just kind of take a moment to kind of be like wait maybe I am also feeling this way because sometimes there's nothing worse than feeling some type of way and not really realizing what it is that's going on with you so some of the physical symptoms I don't get all of these but blushing, sweating, a rapid heartbeat, lightheadedness, nausea. People literally can run to the bathroom and puke just from being in a social setting. Stomach cramps, difficulty breathing, trembling, dry mouth. I always get dry mouth. Difficulty thinking of the right words when speaking. That's a big one for me. I remember like on Friday I had to pop out to go get something and like I was driving out my gate and trying to say something to my guard like just to say hello or like what's up or whatever and what came out of my mouth was completely different from what I had planned to say and just in putting together a simple sentence sometimes can be so difficult so difficult symptoms of my anxiety are obsession over worst case scenarios and negative outcomes my ex-partner always used to say that i have a very negative mindset like i'm always thinking of the worst possible thing that can happen but that is a cause for my um anxiety like i'm constantly thinking that like either people are talking bad about me or there there is like a negative output or like if someone hasn't message to me back or something i'll immediately run to think like have i done something wrong something's bad not even in a guilty way that have i done something wrong but more in just like i don't know i'm always beating myself up and i'm always thinking of the most negative thing which is terrible to have to live with another symptom is fear that anxiety reactions and visibility reactions are visible and will be noticed i'm constantly trying to put up a face and trying to pretend that like i'm okay and i don't want anybody around me to know and that's the main reason why i wanted to do this video and so what if people find out i have anxiety like life bro we all have like our skeletons in the closet this just happens to be one of mine one of many you know another symptom is assuming others are hostile and quick to judge especially on social media platforms I'm constantly assuming that people are just very judgmental and not like rooting for me when it's the complete opposite actually the amount of positive remarks that i get from the things that i do is so insane to me sometimes i'm like i don't deserve this um because i'm constantly telling myself that i don't deserve this um but yeah like <laughs> i don't know it's weird but yeah that's another symptom i don't know how to fully explain these things because again, like I said, I haven't really spoken to a professional, um, but I did want to give you guys my raw input of how I'm feeling before I have a professional tell me exactly like what I'm going through and what I'm feeling. You know what I mean? Another one was um, I'm constantly, like sh there's always shame over social anxiety and about being different. I'm already dealing with being ashamed that I have this, disorder or not disorder but like whatever it is like I I'm going through this I'm already very ashamed of it so when I did reach out to this person and I was like this is how I'm feeling and when the response was like that's a very white thing to go through that was a little bit like it took me so much to open up and to receive that was a bit heartbreaking, you know? Um, so again, I just wanna reiterate that like, please do just be very open when your friend or family member is trying to open up because it does, it, it takes a lot to be in a position where you're finally ready to talk about something you know even doing this in doing this video like i'm fearful that like the response may be negative i'm already thinking of all the negative responses that are going to come out from you know doing a video like this but i'm just in the back of my mind constantly like trying to 
say to myself like the amount of people that is going to help in just opening up about it and just being very vocal about this means more like even though it helps one person it means more than the negative remarks that can come from it you know um yeah and that's about sums up my symptoms of my social anxiety and anxiety i have invited um a psychologist called Araika from safe space and safe space has kindly um accepted to be part of this video so she's going to talk more about like um uh, she's going to speak more on the disease and I thought it would help to just kind of hear from it from a professional and not just a random professional but a professional that is based in Dar and is constantly um, pushing for the initiative for mental health um, within our Tanzanian and black community. So yeah, in the next clip, um, Araika will be speaking about social anxiety and anxiety disorder. Hi, my name is Araika Zawad Hafsa Mkulo. You can call me Araika Zawadi or Hafsa. I am a cognitive psychologist and the founder of Safe Space Group. In regards to social anxiety, um, how would you define it? So social anxiety, there is, there's different ways to look at it, okay? So we call it social phobia, um, social anxiety disorder, or social anxiety. Social anxiety disorder is different or a subset of um, anxiety disorders in general um, in the sense that there are a lot of similar symptoms but they're specific to social interactions and social situations now a lot, a lot of people when they hear social anxiety disorder they think being afraid of crowds or being afraid of people but it's not necessarily that it's it's mostly the fear of interaction the fear of judgment the fear of humiliation the fear of embarrassment um, when interacting with other people so it's not not necessarily the same as being afraid of crowds which I think is the general uh, misconception um, what would be like a short type of I don't know advice that you give somebody in terms of dealing with it or overcoming it right is that even a possibility to overcome this disease mm -hmm. or you know? yeah yeah so normally social anxiety disorder social phobia can last um, a few years if it's super serious but it can also last a lifetime now that's not saying that it can't be treated it can obviously as a psychologist i will say best option i mean we shy away from medication unless it's super serious yeah but talk therapy is one of the best ways because a huge part of anxiety involves our thought process right and how we process information and where we um have distorted thinking where we have to heighten self-criticism, um, those things can be changed through talk therapy. Okay, depending on where you are on the spectrum, meaning you could have high mental health in other areas and be experiencing social anxiety disorder, or you could have low mental health and experience social anxiety disorder. Those two things combined could le lead to you experiencing other disorders at the same time, like depression, like generalized anxiety disorder. Um, and depending on how serious it is, so on top of talk therapy, it's a good idea to also get medication but you would need to talk to a psychiatrist or medical doctor to be prescribed medication. How common do you think um, this disease is? So whenever it comes to prevalence of psychological disorders, I will always say it with a grain of salt because all of the research, all of the data is based on western world and the world in general so we don't know how much of this is going on in africa but thus far the estimation of general anxiety on all disorders falling under general anxiety is like 20 percent of the population which is pretty prevalent for a mental health disorder but um social anxiety disorder and social phobia ranges between six and 13 percent mm. so there's different studies that say different things but i'd say around that range six to 13 percent of the 20 percent of people that have anxiety disorders can i be mistaken for like shyness Did somebody maybe that is dealing with anxiety think that maybe they're shy mm -hmm. and not actually that yeah. they're going through all of this so it's pretty common for um, social phobia, social anxiety disorders to be mistaken for shyness, but they are not the same thing mm. because, uh, well, when you're experiencing social anxiety and you, you obviously don't want to be around people as often as other people who don't have social anxiety disorder would want to be around people. Mm. So most likely than not, you would... So most likely than not, you would try to shy away from um, being around people, which would 
come across as you are shy but shy in itself that's a personality trait right so there are people who have social anxiety disorder who are pretty extroverted and um, there are people who don't have a social anxiety disorder and are shy in nature although it may come across as that but they are not the same thing what you've mentioned on people who are extroverted but have the disorder so what is high functioning right <laughs> So high functioning social anxiety under the criteria that your life is affected, that your social life is affected uh, or uh, you're prevented from living the way most people would, uh, in quotation, would in the sense that you can work, you can make your money, you are emotionally stable, uh, you're not going around um, dam damaging property, harm harming others or harming yourself. Those would be some of like the main criteria. So with high functioning so, uh, social anxiety disorder, it's hard to diagnose because that you're not really falling under that criteria and a lot of things you're going through internally and because most people who are high functioning social who have high functioning social anxiety um, are able to live through life in a way that other other people who have social anxiety what can't they also convince themselves that they don't have a problem so the solution for that is normally talk therapy but yeah advice would you give any of the like viewers that are watching um, and maybe relate to any type of mental illness that they're dealing with or this particular mental illness like mm. what steps should they take or how should they so practical advice on how you can overcome uh, whatever mental health struggle you're currently going through or if a family member is going through um, on your own right so this is you know before you seek help so these are tips that you can do at home at work uh, first of all you know self-awareness because that's that's the first step right if the longer you keep running away from any type of mental health challenge the more you're like igniting the fire because it's not something you can touch right it's not like a stomach ache and you're like okay my stomach hurts and this pain is getting too much it's easy to ignore mental health challenges so first of all be honest with yourself and then journal okay because that's a way of of getting out thoughts and emotions and and a lot of times especially with anxiety things um start to to get uncontrollable because they're just floating right and then they just like it's uh like this domino effect of just horrible negative thoughts or negative emotions and then all of a sudden you're having a panic attack so um make it a habit to download all those thoughts especially before you sleep um, another thing you can do at home is also there are a lot of cognitive behavioral therapy classes available now courses that you can take to you can't give yourself therapy but at least you can understand how thoughts work because at least with me and the work that I do with with my clients a lot of times like 80% of talk therapy is about changing the patterns of our thoughts and they can be changed it's just that we're all from the day that you were born until today, you have this neural network that tells you how to think and, and what calculations you make in your mind. And sometimes you don't realize when those calculations are dysfunctional. So if you think of your brain as hardware and your mind as a software, you know, you can just change the code to the software. There's upgrades to every code, right? To your phone, to everything. Mm -hmm. So you can think of it the same way where, you know, you get to change the code of your own mind and your own way of thinking. Now, of course, these are all steps depending on where you fall on that spectrum that I was talking about. So if you find yourself really tipping onto the side of the spectrum where things are really getting out of control and you, you feel alone, you feel isolated, you feel like no one's going to understand if you talk to them or you do have a great support group but there's a lot of judgment or um, people make it about them when you start talking to them and they'll be like, you know, they try to give you advice instead of listening to you seek help there's no shame in it it's it's 2020 we are all on a spectrum and we move on that spectrum depending on what's going on in our life and that moment in time so seek help tell people you're close to that you are struggling with something and then obviously uh, talk to a therapist talk to a psychologist so safe space has for psychologists that you can work with if you wanted to virtually or physically and you can find us on instagram at safespace.africa or you can go to our website www.safespacetz.com all of our discovery sessions are free because we want to make that entry process to start therapy as easy and smooth as possible so that if you don't know what it's about you don't know what it's like at all 
you could just book a free discovery session with any psychologist that you identify with and uh, see if that's a process you want to or journey you want to take um, and beyond therapy uh, at safe space we are big on knowledge sharing and conversations and creating safe spaces <laughs> for people to really express themselves to be who they are uh, because we all need a space or two or ten like that and so we have events often uh, if you follow us on our Instagram page you'll get to see whenever we uh, have an event and they're mostly free we have not done a paid event so far so you can come you can express yourself you can connect with like-minded individuals we're also starting support groups really soon uh, for different uh, psychological disorders anxiety is one of them depression is one of them substance abuse is one of them and this is a way to make therapy obviously more affordable more accessible but also um, you know having peers that are uh, going through healing at the same time is very very helpful uh, to your own healing so welcome to safe space yeah and I just want to say it's not uncommon to be shy and to be a little bit reserved about keeping th these diseases or disease a secret because it is it can be really hard to open up and yeah there is a lot of people that are willing to support you and even if maybe your family and friends don't i'm willing to hear about it or maybe if i can't meet you i can text you about it or dm me or text me in the comments below and i'm happy to just you know refer you to a lot of psychologists that you can speak to on this disease and any other diseases that you're going through like i said um my mental health journey has been a little bit of a long one it did start with schizophrenia into depression into anxiety into a little bit more specifically social anxiety so it had it has been a long one i have but i i'm really I wake up every day and I'm like, even dealing with what I'm dealing with, this is how far I've managed to come and this is how much I've managed to do. And I'm really proud of that. Don't ever feel like you are limited because the sky is the limit. Um, this is only the beginning of this journey for me and you. And yeah, I just surround yourself with people that will love you and accept you and be there for you. And I'm so grateful that I've managed to do that in every period of my mental health um, journey. And yeah, <laughs> that's about it. We do check the information below for any contacts. And you're not alone. I know I'm not alone. And yeah, thank you guys so much for listening thank you youtube for giving me this platform where i can feel comfortable enough to open and express myself about things like this but instagram i feel can be a little bit judgmental a little bit pretentious you know there's this whole like um expectation to be perfect and to be good and to just you know do everything right um and i feel like with youtube i can kind of express myself in any way that i want to and just talk to you about mental health and talk to you about anything like so yeah um thank you to youtube thank you to my subscribers for just being so welcoming and yeah thank you for your love and support kindly do click the subscribe button um for more videos i will be releasing a vlog very soon i think i'm going to do a vlog today and tomorrow um and then release it on like saturday or sometime in the weekend so stay tuned for my vlog Thanks so much bye